Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film. We are the night. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film begins by showing several images of three young women, and these photos date further and further back until the end of the 18th century. The scene then fast forwards into the modern time in a private airplane where all the passengers and the pilot are dead. All of them have bite marks on their neck, and fear for their lives is still evident in their dead eyes. The only survivors are the three young women, who are obviously the killers. These women differ in many aspects, but they all share something similar. The tall blonde one is the leader, Louise, and the sophisticated gorgeous one is Charlotte, while the youngest and the childish one is Nora. Louise finds a terrified air hostess in the restroom, whose eyes Louise stares into. After examining her eyes, Louise breaks her neck, and moments later, Louise comes out of the bathroom with blood on her mouth. Louise wipes it off and jumps off the plane with Charlotte and Nora. The following day, an 18-year-old small-time pickpocket girl Lena lurks near an ATM cash dispenser. As Lena's victim uses the machine, she subtly pickpockets his credit card, when suddenly the police appear, prompting her to run in panic. In fact, the police don't come for Lena, but for the man she just pickpocketed. However, because she runs as soon as they show up, a police officer Tom chases her. Lena stops at a bridge and changes her clothes to be unrecognized. Tom thinks he has lost the suspected accomplice. Tom sits beside her and reveals that the man she just pickpocketed turns out to be a Russian pimp, implying that she almost ruined their sting operation. As the conversation continues, Tom realizes that Lena is the one he's been chasing. He tries to arrest her. However, Lena butt-heads him in the face and kicks him right in his rotten nuts before jumping off the bridge onto a passing boat. Instead of shooting or chasing Lena, Tom laughs at himself as if he had just been beaten off by a girl, a criminal nonetheless. After escaping, Lena tries to withdraw from the credit card, but to her bad luck, there's no money. Lena returns home to a large high-rise apartment block, pissed off, only to be more irritated as she finds her alcoholic mother flirting with her parole officer. Fed up with her miserable life, Lena goes to a nightclub where everyone is being examined with a hidden camera by Louise. Upon zooming into Lena's eyes, Louise orders the guard to let her in. While inside the club, Lena dances with Louise. After their dance, the two drink at the bar. Louise asks about Lena's friends, to which she simply replies she has no friends. Lena excuses herself into the bathroom. Louise follows her. Lena feels Louise creeping her out as Louise talks about something unique and breathtaking inside of Lena. Lena dismisses Louise, but then she notices that although they are in front of the mirror, only her own reflection can be seen. As Lena starts to panic, Louise whispers into her ears that she's not a human being before biting Lena's neck. In shock, Lena strongly throws Louise away from her, breaking the stalls. But Louise smiles as she's right. Freaked out, Lena runs home and tries to sleep through the pain from the bite marks. The following day, as she awakes, Lena realizes that the sun burns her, forcing her to stay inside. As a solar eclipse occurs, Lena slowly experiences the effects of her transformation from Louise's bite. She feels hungry, but only raw meat and blood would satisfy her hunger. She also casts no reflection in the mirror, so she returns to the nightclub to get answers. Nora enthusiastically welcomes her, while Charlotte remains silent as usual. Lena immediately confronts Louise, who instead offers her a shot glass filled with blood to welcome her into her new life as a vampire. However, Lena breaks down as she cannot comprehend and accept that she's now an immoral, so Louise plans something for her. They sell an angry and confused Lena to a Russian pimp as a prostitute, as Louise plans for Lena to kill the wicked man to ease her transformation. Lena is locked in a room with the man, who starts beating her before raping her. Lena expectedly tries to fight and wounds the man in the face. While still in her weakened state, the man's blood drops on Lena's lips. Lena charges an attack on the wicked man, overwhelmed by her vampiric bloodlust. However, a single drop of blood is not enough, so the man chokes Lena in a struggle. Lena then grabs the light bulb and smashes it onto his head. Lena tries to escape. However, another wicked man comes out and shoots her with a shotgun. Although everything's blurry, Lena sees glimpses of Louise, Charlotte, and Nora returning to kill the Russian pimps before setting them on fire. Unbeknownst to the vampires, one mobster hides in one of the roofs in fear for his life. The following day, Tom and his work partner lead the case of the Russian pimps. They find the two burned bodies and a hidden camera inside one of the light bulbs. On the other hand, Lena wakes up in a hotel room where Louise offers her another shot glass filled with blood. Although she tries to fight it this time, the urge and hunger overpower her will. As she drinks the blood, Lena regains her strength, even stronger this time. Louise helps Lena remove her dirty and torn clothes before taking her to the bathtub. This is where Louise tells Lena how she transformed into a vampire 280 years ago at a mass fall. 
Just like Lena, Louise hated her maker, but over time, Louise fell for her maker after he showed Louise the benefits of living as a vampire and traveling throughout Europe. A century later, Louise's lover and maker burned to death. Louise almost committed suicide to join her. However, Louise's hope and longing pulled herself back into life, so Louise started looking for a new companion. After centuries of searching, Louise found Lena and believed she was her maker's reincarnation. After sharing that, Louise leaves the bathroom to give Lena some privacy. As Lena bathes, the bite marks on her neck disappear. Lena submerges herself into the water, her short hair grows and returns to its natural color. Her ears and nose piercings, tattoos, scars, bruises, and wounds disappear within seconds, like they were never there. On the other hand, Tom and his partner watch the CCTV footage and find the sole survivor, the mobster. Meanwhile, Lena is now accepting and embracing her new life as a vampire and leaving her miserable life as a poor and neglected teenager. She spends the night shopping with her silver Lamborghini, a gift from Louise. They stop at a closed mall, and Louise bribes the guard with a large amount of money, leaving them to have all the fun on their own. They take pieces of jewelry, shoes, other material, and expensive stuff all to themselves. Lena notices Charlotte longingly staring at a pair of baby shoes. Louise simply puts back the shoes on the shelves and leaves with the girls to a restaurant. They dine in a local fancy restaurant to have fun, despite the human food not satisfying their hunger for blood. While eating, Nora tells Lena that she met Louise at a gay pride love parade in 1997, where Louise turned her into a vampire. Suddenly, a man from the table beside theirs calls Charlotte's attention and tells her that smoking isn't allowed in the establishment. As a reply, Charlotte puts out the cigarette on her eyeball and then winks at the man, and with just one blink, her burned eyeball completely heals. The man leaves in a rush with his date, and Nora laughs at them. Louise then shares that there are no more male vampires currently in existence, as the male vampires grew arrogant, stupid, and greedy. So the female vampires grew tired of their superiority and killed them all, with the common promise to never turn a man into a vampire. After that, they return to the nightclub, where they party and hook up with humans for the sake of fun. Moments later, they go inside their private room, where they fill and satisfy their hunger with numerous shot glasses filled with blood. Nora even teaches Lena how to walk on walls and ceilings, one of the advantages and cool things of being a vampire. As the night ends, the four ladies return to their hotel room to perform their morning ritual. They stand outside the balcony and allow the first rays of the sun to burn their skin, but retreat inside before any lasting harm can be done. Charlotte stays outside longer than the others, but returns inside after Louise calls her. As they hide from the sun, Louise finally makes a move on Lena by deeply and passionately tongue massaging her, which startles and confuses Lena. And so, Lena accidentally bites Louise's lips, causing awkwardness in the room. Louise apologizes for rushing into things. Louise heads outside, where she scratches her nails onto the walls while repeatedly calling herself stupid. The following day, Tom uses Lena's police record to find her address, and later that night, Lena returns home to visit her mother, who has not even noticed her absence. Lena hugs her mother tightly, before leaving with her stuff. As Lena goes out, Tom sees her. Tom almost doesn't recognize Lena, due to her different hair color and new fancy dressing style. Tom says that he will not arrest her as she ripped out the Russian pimp, but that she could go to prison for violating her 18 months probation, for auto theft and stealing the credit card. He then hands Lena the clothes she wore the day they met, which he found behind the pillar at the bridge after she escaped. The two have a coffee as Tom asks her out, but in return, he will leave Lena alone. Everything is going smoothly, until Lena suddenly sees Louise approaching, so Lena immediately walks back home with Tom. Before they part ways, Tom gives Lena his calling card, and insists she keeps it. Lena then lies about having a rich boyfriend who spoils her with fancy things, in order to turn off the poor Tom. After that, Lena walks into her Lamborghini and drives away. As she returns to the nightclub, Lena finds Charlotte alone in a room, watching a moving picture of herself. The silent brunette finally speaks to Lena and shares that she was once a movie actress in the 1920s. However, Charlotte sees herself as a talentless actress. She and Louise met on an opening night. Just then, Louise comes in and finishes the story by saying that she turned Charlotte into a vampire because of her beauty. Fortunately for Charlotte, her husband and daughter had gone home when she was bitten. Nora comes just in time, as Lena tells Louise she misses the sun. To spoil her partner, Louise illegally takes them to an indoor swimming pool with artificial sunlight, allowing them to have a pool party in the sun. Moments later, two watchmen find the girls and warn them to leave. But then, Nora convinces the watchmen to join by removing her top. As one of the watchmen joins Louise on her floating bed, Nora kills the other. 
The remaining watchman starts looking for his buddy, but he quickly swims to get out after seeing his buddy's dead body floating. As the man resurfaces from the water, Charlotte tears off a page from her book and slices the man's throat with it, but before she can drink his blood, Lena comes running to stop her. Lena tries to save the man, but not long after, the man dies in a painful and slow death. Overwhelmed and terrified, Lena flees the scene. As Lena returns to the hotel room, she leaves a devastating voice message to Tom. As the sun rises, Tom and his partner interrogate the survived and shaken up mobster who claims that the women with devil eyes are the ones who killed his work partners. The mobster adds that they stole his Lamborghini, and as he describes it, Tom realizes it's the same car that Lena drove before. Tom immediately calls Lena to warn her that police are about to arrest them as the Lamborghini has been seen at the Grand Hotel. However, he tries to keep himself calm after hearing Lena's voicemail since the partner is in the car with him. Meanwhile, Nora wakes up with the bellboy she has been flirting with on her side. Nora tries to wake him up but realizes that she accidentally killed him last night while they had a vampiric hormone exchange. Nora breaks down into tears since she genuinely likes the bellboy, and just then, the rest of the girls come into the room. Louise shows her that the SWAT team is invading the building. Charlotte volunteers to stall the police while the others escape. Moments later, the police barge into the ladies' hotel room, and Tom reaches the floor with more officers not long after. The three of them grasp onto the ceiling and wait for the police to leave, before returning to the ground and entering the elevator. They run into the parking lot where they take their cars, specially made to protect them from sunlight. Lena and Louise take one car, while Nora drives alone. On the other side, as Tom reaches the room's door, bullets rain inside as Charlotte slaughters the SWAT team, who simply think that the ladies are dangerous criminals. After the raining bullets, Tom enters the room and shoots Charlotte before she kills him, causing her to fall out the window and to the ground. As the sun begins to burn her skin, the two girls manage to get her inside the car. Nora drives behind them, but accidentally crashes into a car, prompting her to get out. The three try to save Nora, but the police shower their vehicle with bullets, stopping them from saving Nora. Nora burns to death. Left with no choice, Louise drives away, but the car roof gets ripped off by a roadblock, causing the ladies to crash into a subway to escape the scourging light. As expected, the ladies survive the crash, but Tom manages to chase them. However, they escape by fleeing the train and hiding at an abandoned shelter where Louise has kept cash. Louise blames Lena for leading the police to them and for Nora's death. Since they are wanted by the police, the ladies prepare to escape to Moscow to make their new life there. Before leaving, Charlotte demands to see her only daughter, who now resides at a local retirement home. Charlotte sings a lullaby to her dying daughter, who recognizes her mother in her last moments. Louise takes Charlotte from the heartbreaking scene. The day before their flight, the ladies return to their hideout to perform their morning ritual for the last time. As the sun rises, Charlotte locks the two inside, and despite Louise desperately trying to break the barrier to stop her, Charlotte willingly allows the sun to burn her to death. Louise and Lena break down into tears as they hear Charlotte's dying screams. Later that night, Lena leaves Louise and heads to Tom. Lena shows him who she really is. Lena forces Tom to pull the trigger, and her wound heals right before him. Lena breaks down into tears as what she thought would be her escape turned out to be her greatest nightmare. Tom comforts her with his muscles, and they soon fall asleep without hormone let go. The partner has suspected that Tom has been having some personal involvement with Lena. Lena easily dominates the policemen and almost drinks the blood of one of them, but she stops after hearing Tom's plea, leading to their arrest and incarceration. Not even long after they get detained, Lena feels goosebumps on her body. Louise comes into the precinct and kills all the policemen there before asking Lena through the speakers how she will manage to live with Tom, a human because he will die in 60 years or less, while she will never age, and then she'll be all alone. After that, she kidnaps Tom and Lena and brings them to the shelter. Louise threatens to kill Tom if Lena doesn't say, I love you to Louise. Lena reluctantly says those words to save Tom's life. However, Louise knows she's lying and tells her that that's the most beautiful lie she's ever heard before shooting Tom. This makes Lena attack Louise out the window and struggle in a furious fight with her. They enter a floor while fighting, and as the sun slowly rises, Lena throws her out the window and into the sunlight. Louise burns to death with a smile on her face. Lena returns to the wounded Tom and tries to turn him into a vampire so they can live eternally together. However, she manages to stop herself and instead gives him a kiss goodbye and begins to cry. Moments later, policemen arrive at the scene with Tom's partner, but to their bad luck, both Lena and Tom are gone, with no traces of human or vampiric hormones other than Tom's gun. The film ends with the partner looking outside and seeing something other policemen don't. 
He whispers, good luck, before turning around to find that Tom's gun has gone missing. He dismisses that and walks away, keeping what he had seen outside only to himself. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.